Uh, what's up, people? Shalom, shalom. First off, we're giving the highest glory, honor, and praises to Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Um, double honors to the elders, a great millstone who taught us the truth. Shalom to our brothers who push the word in sincerity and in truth. Okay, all across the four corners of the earth, man. Shalom, Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, Barakatah. Today, um, I'm going to be doing a breakdown, you know, Lord willing, by the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shai, um, about the tribe of Manasseh, all right? So called Cubans, all right? Um, we're going to go into, you know, some historical facts, some agriculture, all that good stuff. And, um, you know, some some prophecies of the scriptures as well as the meaning in the name Manasseh, you know. Uh, so without further ado, you know, as is the custom, man, I'm going to get straight into this, man. OK, the name Manasseh in the Hebrew, which is obviously of Hebrew origin, which means forgetful. OK, and this is the reason why uh, this is OK. It says Genesis chapter number 41, verse 51. It says, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for the heavenly father said he hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. So the name means forgetful, okay? Um, understand this, and knowing the lineage, okay, uh, which is very important to know the lineages, man. Uh, so basically, Jacob was with Leah, Zilpah, Bila, and Rachel. Okay, and with Rachel, Jacob was with Rachel. All right, she was very fair, maiden, and had Joseph and Benjamin. Okay? And then Joseph basically passed that mantle of his of his tribe basically to um to Ephraim first and Manasseh second. Even though Manasseh was the firstborn son of Joseph, okay? We're going to get into scriptures and um, show you why uh, they make sense to where... Oh, let me get into the scripture. No, no, sorry. Let me get right to it. All right, we're going to go to Genesis chapter 48. Verse number uh, 13. All right, this is the book of Genesis chapter 48, verse 13. It says, and Joseph took them both, Ephraim in his right hand, remember that, right hand, toward Israel's left hand, okay, and Manasseh in his left hand towards Israel's right hand. That's a clue right there, man, okay? That's a clue, all right, about the geography of where they're going to be located to the ends of the earth, Okay. It says, and Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head. So the right hand was on Ephraim's head, his right hand. Remember that too, okay? Because it's very important on the right-hand side and on the left-hand side for the geography of where they are in relation to one another. And then we're going to go into the agriculture to prove that they are the so-called Cubans, okay? And they must be for various, various reasons, man, and, and in relation to everything else. Okay, so I'm going to read it again. This is Genesis chapter 48 and 14. And Israel stretched out his hand, his right hand, his right hand, and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. And he blessed Joseph and said, Yahweh. Before whom my fathers Abraham and Isaac did walk. All right. And this is powerful stuff, man. Check this right here. Okay. The God, which is the power which fed me all my life long unto this day. The angel which redeemed me from all evil blessed the lads and let my name be named on them. And the name of my fathers Abraham and Isaac and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. So that's where he passed the mantle from Joseph, okay, uh, onto them, okay. So it came on to he passed the tribes basically to them, man. The tribehood is going from Joseph. The house of Joseph is basically Manasseh and Ephraim. With Ephraim leading the way on the right hand side. Remember the right hand, okay? This is real good, man. It's gonna be real good for y'all, man. All right, Lord willing, man, and you know, Lord willing, the Lord make this edifying for y'all brothers, man, and sisters too. Okay, so it says, in the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, 
and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. And when Joseph saw that his father laid his right hand upon the head of Ephraim, it displeased him. And he held up his father's hand to remove it from Ephraim's head onto Manasseh's head. And Joseph said unto his father, Not so, my father, <clears throat> for this is the firstborn. Put thy right hand upon his head. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall be great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. And he blessed them that day, saying, In thee shall Israel bless, saying, The heavenly Father make thee as Ephraim and as Manasseh, and he set Ephraim before Manasseh. So let's check the verse of scriptures and the prophecies to bring that out and why the, uh, the geography of this is very important, man. So when you look at the map, right, we're going we're gonna to check the map, yo. You, all you got to do is look at the map. And we're going to look at the map uh, uh, of Cuba and Puerto Rico and where Puerto Rico is. And you can just clearly see this here. All right, this is where Cuba is, okay? This is Cuba. This on the left-hand side, according to where Israel is, which is way, way far left, okay? Way, way to the left, man, to the east, okay? And then uh, right here is uh, Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico's right here, okay? So if you're looking at the map, then on the right-hand side is Ephraim, and on the left-hand side is, is Manasseh, man. Remember that he put his left hand on Manasseh, okay? He was the, the firstborn, and he was the, the younger, Ephraim, okay? Which is the tribal leader of the northern kingdom, okay? That's the leader of the northern kingdom, all right? So right-hand side, left-hand side. And if you're looking at the map, if I'm looking at this, Ephraim's on the right hand. And Cuba's on the left-hand side. So that just makes sense right there, man, okay? Because they were brothers, and they were close, in very close quarters to one another, man. All right? So let's also get some more verses of scriptures to prove how uh, how they how they rock together, okay? And let me get that real quick, verse 21. Genesis 48 and 21. And Israel said unto Joseph, Behold, I die. But the heavenly father shall be with you and bring you again unto the land of your fathers. Moreover, I have given to thee one portion above thy brethren, which I took out of the hand of the Amorite. Okay, so that's it on that. So let's get this here. Uh, another verse of scripture. All right, let's go to Deuteronomy chapter number 33. All right, this is Deuteronomy chapter 33 and 13. All right. Okay, it reads as follows. It says, And of Joseph he said, Blessed of the Lord be his land, for the precious things of heaven, for the dew, and for the deep that coucheth beneath. Okay, with deep that couches beneath, which is the those things that grow from the ground, man. Okay, those things that grow from the ground, uh, which is their fruit. Okay, and their their gross domestic product, man. So you gotta understand, you know, living in in Havana, there's a lot in Havana. There's a lot of uh, gross domestic product that was coming out, mainly sugar cane. Okay, there was imp importing or slaki. There was uh, exporting sugar cane, man. This made up about 30% of their uh, national product, man. And really, they was very heavily into that, man. And we're going to get into all of that, man, in, in the, the region as well. Because there's a lot of mountainous regions out there and in Puerto Rico as well. Because these, these pertain to them both for the most part, you know, for location purpose. So it says, verse 14, uh, Deuteronomy 33 and 14. And for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun... And for the precious things put forth by the moon. And for the chief things of the ancient mountains. And for the precious things of the lasting hills. 
Okay, so basically talking about their geography and where they were located. And uh, if you look at this, um, there are definitely mountains in Cuba. Okay, so it says uh, three major mountain ranges. Okay, uh, let's let's get into that real quick because it just said it, man. The ancient mountains. Okay, so it says Cuba has this is an article. Cuba has three major mountain ranges in the west, the Sierra de los Oran Orangos. Okay, Oran Anganos. Okay, it's locked. Ranges range rises to the height of 800 meters, which is 200 and 2,500 feet above sea level, which is real, real heavy. Um, it says in the south central region, the Sierra de Trinidad or the Escambre Mountains. It says tower 1,150 meters, which is 3,800 feet above sea level and overlook the colonial city of Trinidad. It says, in the east, Cuba's tallest mountains are the Sierra Maestra. It says, topped with by Rio uh, de Turquino, peak at 2,005 meters, which is 6,578 feet above sea level. So they got big mountain ranges and this is and excuse me you know because i got a little cough or whatever a little cold or something i don't know what the hell's going on change of the seasons so it says verse 15 and for the chief things this is deuteronomy 33 and 15 and for the chief things of the ancient mountains for the precious things of the lasting hills okay uh what's precious out there man their agriculture the fruit okay it says, and for the precious things of the earth, in fullness thereof, and for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, which is Ephraim, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. Okay, so which is also Manasseh, huh? Okay. His glory is like the firstling, okay, uh, okay, come on, yeah, let's check that. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns, and horns of strength in the scriptures, you know. With them, he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. So when the tribes were leaving, obviously Ephraim, when the ten tribes were leaving uh, uh, and making their way from the river Euphrates, and I believe it's um, Second Ezra chapter number 13, Ephraim was leading the way, man. Ephraim was leading the way because that's just what the scripture says, all right? Because they're, they're the leader of the northern kingdom, man. But they no longer wanted to be around the heathens, so they went somewhere where they could actually do their thing, man. And, and fulfill the prophecy in the scriptures. Okay, so these are these are very close together, man. I'm gonna say it one more time. I'm gonna say this: It says, "With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth." And well, where's that? That's right around here, man. Right to the far to the far uh, west, man. Okay, uh, in the Americas, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim. And they are the thousands of Manasseh. Okay, and then it gets into Zebulon and, and things like that. Okay, and, and uh, Ishakar and Zebulon, which is right next door to them. You know, it's just beautiful, man. Beautiful harmony how this all came together, man. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, let's check some more verses of scriptures. <clears throat> and then we'll get into the agriculture, man. This is just a quick breakdown, you know what I'm saying? Y'all could go a little bit more into it if you want. Um, but just these these main points are real important because then you could really when you when you're on the streets teaching and you could just bring it out, man. You know, you should have the the map with you too. You know, that's a real important thing too because you could show them, you know, through the river Euphrates, everything like that where they went through, um, and everything. You know, you can even bring that out in Second Ezra. Oh, I believe it's thirteen, in verse forty, and it talks about the lost tribes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Really, ten tribes. 
let's go down to verse 40. Okay, here it goes. <clears throat> Salakia. Okay, this is 2nd Ezra chapter number 2, verse, or Salakia, chapter number 13, verse 40. Those are the 10 tribes which are carried away prisoners out of their own land in the time of Hosea the king, whom uh, Salamanassar, the king of Assyria, led away captive, and he carried them over the waters. So they came, so came they into another land. But they took this counsel among themselves that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt, that they might there keep their statutes, which they never kept in their own land. And they entered into the river Euphrates by the narrow places of the river, for the Most High then showed signs for them and held still the flood till they were passed over. It says, for through that country was a great way to go, namely a year and a half. And the same region is called Asherah. It says, then dwelt they there until a latter time. And now when they shall begin to come. Okay. Um, so, yeah, they was the one, you know, uh, leading them, man. They was the one leading them. You know, obviously Ephraim was the leader because that's what it says in the scripture here. You know what I'm saying? It says it right there in Deuteronomy chapter number 33. Okay, it says, He shall push the people, this is verse 17, He shall push, and continued on, He shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. So it says, they shall push the people together. And who's that? It's the leader, man. It's the leader of the northern tribes, man, which is Ephraim and then Manasseh, second, man. Because on the right-hand side, which is, you know what I'm saying, the Lord favors the right-hand side, obviously. And on the right hand of, of Cuba is Puerto Rico, man. All right? Or Rich Port, which is Port of Riches. And we really should be doing these breakdowns together because they're so close and similar. But I'm going to bring it out, you know, uh, just about this here. Let's talk about you know, the fruits of Cuba. And really, their most, uh, their geography too, you know. The topography of Puerto Rico is very mountainous regions as well. Large coastal areas, north and south, they have mountain ranges all over the place. You know, and they're about a thousand feet, or excuse me, a thousand meters above sea level too, which is 34,000 feet. You know, not as high as the 6,000 feet of Manassas. You know, Manassas is real, real heavy, man. You know, they got some real, which is Cuba, they got a lot of tall mountains, you know. Um, let's check some more stuff out real quick. Yeah, phone about to die, man. Okay, let's take this uh, here, this sugar cane product of Havana, okay. This is one of their major things that they be importing, okay. Uh, Cuban sugar. And Cuba, too, let's bring this out, what Cuba means. Um, let me see. I had this pulled up. Give me one second. Bear with me. Okay, we see the geography of Cuba. All right, the word Manasseh means forgetful, just to bring that back out. Okay. All right, let's get this real quick. What what the word Cuba means? You're gonna be kind of bugged out at this too. <clears throat> All right, the word Cuba says the name Cuba came from the Taino indigenous word Ucubanacan, meaning where fertile land is abundant. So you already know, man, the Taino Indians named this their own thing, which says where fertile land is abundant, okay? So how did Cuba get his name? From the Taino Indians, which is the brother of the, of the Manasseh tribe, okay, which is the Ephraimites, and they're closely related. So yeah, of course, you know, Ephraim means to be fruitful, and their land was fruitful, 
you know, because that's what the scripture and the prophecy says. You know, if y'all check this video out again or whatever the case is. So it says the name of Cuba came from the Taino indigenous word. Uh, let me see if I say this right. Cubana, Cubanacan, meaning where fertile land is abundant. And that just goes right with that scripture, man. It says it right here in the scriptures, you know. So uh, let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter number 33. And it says here in verse 13, and Joseph, and of Joseph, he said, blessed of the Lord be his hand for the precious things of heaven, for the dew and for the deep that coucheth beneath. So that's talking about fertility, man, the fertile, the fertile land, man. The way that this land is so fertile, you know what I'm saying? So um, this is this is beautiful, man. So uh, that it's a fertile land. That that's what it says right there. Where fertile land is abundant. So that's that's Cuba, man. And they're like I said, their their main thing was was exporting all of their uh, resources, man. That's what they had was was uh, their national product was sugarcane and other things that they was pushing out. Which I'm gonna get into that real quick so y'all know exactly what's going on. All right, verse 14, and for precious and for the precious fruits brought forth by the sun and for the precious things put forth by the moon and for the chief things of the ancient mountains, which I told you already about Cuba and their mountains ranges, man, which goes 6,000 feet above sea level, man, the three major mountain regions that they got, which is that's come on, man, when you go into history, when you go into things like this. And you get to further understanding, uh, you just gain understanding, man. And that's a blessing because a lot of people don't know how to break down the tribes. You know, they, they don't take the time to go through it, man, because they think it's a game, man. They, they think you just go out here and just, you know, talk a bunch of shit. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, yeah, man, y'all should be sharing this video, you know, and letting it, letting them know what it is, yo. Verse 14. And for, the, uh, it's like, yeah, um, let's go to verse number 16. Deuteronomy 20, uh, 33 and 16. And for the precious things of the earth and the fullness thereof, and for the good will of him that dwelt in the bush, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, which is Ephraim. Ephraim, man. And that's why they got a rainforest out there. You know, Ephraim's got a whole rainforest out in Puerto Rico. And there's, there's papaya. There's all that stuff, man. They got all these types of exotic fruits, man. You know, uh, 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 all types of stuff we'll get into in a minute. All right. And that's why you can live on the land out there, man. You can live off the land out there. You can't do that here, man, in America, man. You know, in North America, man. You know, certain places, man. You just can't do it. All right. It says, let, let the blessing come upon the head of Joseph, which was the Ephraimites, and upon the top of the head of him that was separated from his brethren. All right, which is talking about uh, Manasseh, man. His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns, which we know that horns symbolize power in the scriptures. So they're warriors, man. They whoop ass, you know. With them, he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth. This is a prophecy the scripture, like I said, linking up with 2 Ezra 13 and verse 40. Uh, and let's go to that. He said, to the ends of the earth. Remember that, man. Remember what he just said, yo. To the ends of the earth. Okay? So let's see here. Uh, let's go back a little bit. Second Ezra. To the ends of the earth. Remember that. So it says, this is Second Ezra, chapter number uh, 13, verse 41. But they took this counsel among themselves, they're talking about the Israelites, the ten tribes, that they would leave the multitude of the heathen and go forth into a further country where never mankind dwelt. Okay? Never mankind dwelt, man. So that's the key right there again. That's to the ends of the earth, man. That's the very end of the earth. That's where nobody's been at. Okay? So that, that's facts right there, man. These are facts. You know, you can't dispute that, man. And it says, people together, back to Deuteronomy 33 and 17, continued on. With them shall he push the people together to the ends of the earth. And they are the ten thousands of Ephraim. So they're leading the way. And they are the thousands of Manasseh. So 
So that so that was who was you know from the the northern kingdom, man, which was scattered before uh, the other tribes. You know, the ten tribes were were lost tribes for a reason because they just went off to the to the Americas. You know, first, and then uh, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi came in a little bit afterwards, man. Okay, so uh, let's get into the uh, let's see the agriculture. All right, this is some of the agriculture of Cuba. It says here, and uh, you, you check this on Wikipedia. It says Cuba was one once the largest uh, sugar exporter until the 1960s. So it was the largest sugar exporter till the 1960s. The U.S. received 33 percent of its sugarcane imports from Cuba. During the Cold War, Cuba's sugar exports were bought with subsidies from the Soviet Union. After the collapse of this trade arrangement, coinciding with the collapse in sugar prices, two-thirds of sugar mills in Cuba closed. So yeah, they were relying on the land to make them money. You know what I'm saying? That Because that's, that's what that's all about, man. Because that goes with the prophecy of the scriptures, man. Okay. It says 100,000 workers lost their jobs in Cuba. However, the sugar production in the cane sugar mills has fallen uh, from approximately 8 million metric tons to 3.2 million metric tons in the 2015 period. Okay, another thing that uh, says is Cuba has the second largest area planted with tobacco of all countries worldwide. Tobacco production in Cuba has remained about the same since the late 1990s. Cigars are famous Cuban product worldwide, and almost the whole production is exported. You see? So this is just, this is what they do, man. They're agriculture. And let's check their tropical fruits. It says plantains and bananas account for 47% and 24% of the local production, re uh, respectively. Both are only produced for domestic consumption. Other tropical fruits produced in Cuba are mango, papaya, pineapple, avocado, uh, guava, coconut, and amanas. Ooh, how the hell you say that? Amanase, some shit like that. Custard, apple family. Okay, um, you know, and of course there's there's more to that, but you just see that you know the, you know the agriculture in Cuba was awesome. You know, the topography was awesome. You know, they had cassava. Um, and that's a native, it says native to Latin America in the Cuban region. It's grown in almost every country of the region. Cuba is the second largest producer of cassava in the Caribbean with the production of 300,000. Okay. It says, however, the yield per uh, hectare, it says, is the, large, is the lowest of all Caribbean countries. All right, most of the Cubans' productions, it says, used directly for fresh consumption. So, yeah, a lot of that stuff, they just they deal with it right then and there, you know. Um, they already sent it to Florida because Florida is real quick. It's real close to, to Cuba, you know, um, which we could get into the Seminole Indians as well. I'm probably going to do another break, a breakdown on that next, you know. But, hey, man, hopefully, you know, that was edifying to y'all, you know, uh, brothers and some of y'all sisters who do watch us uh, because... You know, when you go into the verses of scriptures with the prophecies in the right hand of Ephraim and then the uh, uh, the left hand was on Manasseh's head and then Puerto Rico's on the right hand side of Cuba to the left hand side. It just makes perfect sense with the topography, the geography, you know, the fact that they, they are the northern tribe leaders and they all led them all across from the river Euphrates into a, into a land that mankind had never dwelt. It just makes perfect sense that this has got to be the lost tribe, man. Like, that's got to be the lost tribe of Manasseh, you know, due to all these things that are brought out. And there's much, much more, you know. Y'all could go deeper into it, you know. I just wanted to bring out a couple quick points about it. Uh, but Lord willing, now is edifying, you know, and we, you know, try to do a good job, man, by the power and spirit of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So I want to say, Barakatah Yahweh, Barakatah Yahweh Shai, Barakatah Yahweh, Barakatah Yahweh Shai. Barakata Yahweh, Barakata Yahweh Shai, which means bless the Heavenly Father and bless the Heavenly Father's Son, okay? Um, and I also want to say, you know, Shalom and uh, Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shai, Barakata, to the hopeful elect, the house of David, the 144,000, okay? Men, 
and, and also the women and children as well uh, of them who are comprised of the rest of the one third and the women who do believe and follow the scriptures, all right, to the best of their ability. Shalom, all right, y'all brothers stay strong, yo. Shalom.